Okay, uh... The recorded one, you should be on your best behavior. <laughs> so, so, I other group three list uh, your Google Doc uh, document and share it with my Gmail account, not my Spelman account. So, I, some of you try to share with me, but if you, if you share with my Spelman account, I cannot see it. So, let me write down my Gmail account again. Okay. Uh, the picture? Yeah, I thought you should email. I mean, so, no, 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 It's not due until tonight, right? What? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, but uh, you should you should work here now. So. We can work on it now. Thank you. 
together and whatnot, you know.
those those that you are trying to do, you try to finish. I don't think uh, after you submit, I don't even think I have time to review it. So we just go with the class before submit uh, the rest. So and there's also a YouTube uh, tutorial there. But some of these one have all of this missing. Out. I'm not sure why. But uh, so I'm going to create uh, some dummy exercise. Uh, compose. Uh, compose. So let me take a exercise in class review for a time. So, so I'm going to have the wild type sequence first. See the thing? Yeah. Dummy sequence for exercise in class review for exam. That's so click on that. So you have a wild type sequence and mutant sequence. And the question now I ask you first identify where that mutation is. So when do you go to APE? Uh, yeah, I use APE. Wait, is this review for the midterm? Yeah, this is what will happen in midterm. Okay. What was the question? You can try APD. You align sequences and then put it into a cluster? Yes, try to do that. Oh, is it online yet? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Do you put it in cluster to find them? I mean, not, never mind, not cluster. Uh, eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the, the protein, because APD doesn't align protein. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but right now, uh, so first step, where is that nuclear type It's on, online? It's on Moodle. It yeah. says midterm online? Uh, it's here. That means sequences for exercise in class review for it. <laughs> so would that question be like for the APE part or would that question be for like multiple choice? Uh, this is for the APE part. Oh. It must be online. No, it's not online. But if we were asked for like a multiple choice question, the answer would be to um to do it experimentally by aligning it out of a... Uh, no, we know. But I don't think they're right. I'm just asking in general, if somebody asked you how would you figure out the new intertype or where the mutation is? Oh, I see. You alignment. Would, so you just say alignment? Yeah, align the two sequences where the uh, difference is there. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. In principle, that's the principle. Yes. Yeah. It's and you can bring your, uh, for this part, you can bring your own laptop. Okay. Yeah, if you are more comfortable with it, but this will also be provided if you don't have your. So, how would you find me, me APE? Yeah. Uh, you you have to work on it for a while. And then oh, are we about to do? Yeah. Oh, that's Wait, what what's the doing? question. What are we finding? Where is the mutation? Oh, okay. is it, um, are we comparing the Y7 and mutant 8, 1? Yeah, mutant 1. Let's, uh, yeah, sorry. First, work on mutant 1. Uh, Thank you. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, if I want to do this, I'll first open the Wait, are you going to do it? Oh yeah, because you have to save it. Okay, how do I copy this? Copy, copy, copy. Yeah, don't tell us how to do it yet. What? Don't tell us how to do it yet. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah. But how are we supposed to get these sequences into APE? Will you already have me saved? Um, you don't? It's not your language. So maybe you can copy and paste it into there? Yeah. be new file. So, I mean, you can, you can just paste the sequence. So basically highlight all the sequence, copy it, and then just paste it. Hmm. I guess I have to save it first. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If I paste it, it asks me to save. I guess yeah, that's fine. So this, uh, this wild type uh, sequence. Do okay, you? yeah. Right. So then you, you, you do the same thing for the mutant. Right. So oh, that's how you get them? Yeah, yeah. Copy, paste the mutant. Copy. Oh, this, oh if, if, if you skip the header file, you let you paste. But then you will also need to save the file. Uh, save, save the file. This will be mutant 1. Yeah. Do you have another blue cord? How do you what? How do you find out a restriction enzyme that can distinguish the mutant from the wild type? That website, that NEB cutter? That's right. Yeah. What was the answer? The NEB cutter website? This test will be in the first Have to save them first before you can align them. Uh, have to save the alignment. That's just the process. I mean, if you save it, it's fine. It's it's, 
but uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess in the exam, uh, uh, if it's not multiple choice, uh, you probably need to submit a word document for this. So in that case, if you save the process, you probably can get some partial credit even if you final answer. So maybe in the in the exam, maybe this is a question for shorter answers. So you, you can save the, the process, or you, you, can, you can write down how you reach the answer. That way, even if your final answer is wrong, if, if it's correct in the first few steps, you can still get some right. so, so. Okay, versus message two. How do we log on HP laptop is a bonus question. You need to figure out now. Okay. And bio laptop. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dr. Shu. Yeah. So this is the wild type that you're doing this. And we're supposed to be running the HP to find an enzyme. Yeah. Right. So. I thought we were just doing mute and one. Right? Yes. It's worth doing mute and one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. These are the like. But if you know how know how to do mutant one, we don't have to do the same thing on mutant two. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> right so. so let's focus on getting this right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That, is that what it is? Oh. oh, okay. Oh, okay. What which enzyme you identify can be used to distinguish mutant from one? Paper is what you mean, right? If you see, say, I understand, but what you write it down in the wrong, that's what you can't. <laughs> so <laughs> double check with you. Let's see. Oh, I found me mutation. Or you can open up another tab. I found mutation. These are circular, right? Uh, no, this is not circular. These are just uh, <gasps> operating. So yeah, what were we? Fragment. Now you go yeah, to the easy cutter and you type 20. Well, all of us are supposed to do Finding out the um, enzyme use that you can use to um, Probably not the circular when you're going to give it to us on the exam. Oh, tell that's, us? yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I have a look at the final But I would think the information, if it's plasmid, it will be circular. If it's not saying it's plasmid, if it's uh, 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 a fragment or uh, a DNA sequence, that's most likely it. Dr. Chen, yeah. so when we learn two sequences, that's when we find the mutation, right? Yeah. You have to find one that fits. So, yeah. And then what else did you tell us? Uh, found out the restriction enzyme that can distinguish mutant from wild type. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so after you find out the enzyme, you should use APE to find out how would the uh, restriction result choose the enzyme of your choice mm -hmm. cut both mutant and wild type simulate the gel and tell me what fragment will get wait so we find the mutation and then I need step by step I yeah step by step. okay let me write a question on the board maybe it's more. yeah that works so how did you uh, we pick this is for wild type and mutant Y. So first, where is the mutation? 
second, which re restriction enzyme is to distinguish wild type uh, from And as, as three, uh, using the enzyme of your choice. So all these uh, have been all these exercises we have done before, and, and all of them actually also have YouTube tutorial video on it. So it's just a matter of effort to, to figure it out. So you found the restriction enzyme using the NBE cutter. That's right. You can't use any B cutter. How can you find out the enzyme? You can use APE to uh, find out the fragment size okay. and run a simulator in the gel. Mm -hmm. I love it. I that's right. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, uh, this is also uh, so. Some of you have already reached the point you click the enzyme. So in APE, if you do not see the enzyme of your choice, click the enzyme selector. There is a file. Say open new enzyme file. There should be a file called absolutely all enzyme. Click that one. That one. Uh, so by default, it gives you some popular enzyme. And, uh, there's another file basically has all the available enzymes possible there. Yeah. Choose that one. How is this that's actually part of the tutorial, I guess. So let's go over <laughs> uh, So take the absolute all enzymes you can find. In selection, you click you click which enzyme. So that's what. For a On a file. Yeah. You don't want it to be the same one as your wild type and it shouldn't have the same as the hard one that's different and most favorable to your meat. And that's what I'm going to click. So when I click this, I'm doing this just with wild type first? No. Hold on. You don't need that as can. You only take 20 away from the um, mutation, 20 from the right, 20 from the left. And you do it like that. And if you need more, then it's like I don't know to your age. Oh, so you take that long? Yeah, so you take 20 of these, just like 20 of those that way. You take it, copy it, and put it inside of that cut. It. And it'll be the list of enzymes that can cut the fragments. That's right. I lost my name. Okay. I lost my name. 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 If you are done with that, the number four questions are that uh, translate translate wild type and mutant one. Uh, 
despite the nature of this mutation. Basically, your answer should be something like uh, uh, amino acid, say, something like, say, T234A, yeah. or basically it should be something like this. Or, uh, in, in, if it's a uh, uh, French shift, and then you just say French shift, uh, if it, this is just a point mutation. If oh. it's French shift, it should be French shift. It's missed, uh, uh, if it's the uh, nonsense it, mutation, it should be nonsense mutation. But it wouldn't be nonsense mutation. What? Nonsense mutation has a stop color, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. 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 Okay, so I use the NBA cutter. What's the, what's the trying to see which is the nonsense mutation? No, that's just the only mutation. Well, the, 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 the enzyme that cuts well, which I'm not on the top right now. The wild type, the wild type. The question basically asks you to pick the enzyme to, 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 to pick out which one wild type. And so, in a way, you can pick the wild type. Right? No, you just said your top is muted. No, no, my top is wild type. Okay, so then the wild type. There are two fragments here, so that's it. One is size of 239, the other one is 236. So it's very similar size. Okay. Now pressing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to make a screenshot there. Do you like in a yeah, thank you. Oh. How many did you do it? I didn't do it. I'm not special. I got tired of your food. Yes, ma'am. I was just trying to help. So this one is missing it? Uh, that means there's no cut, right? So from the first one to the last one, there's no cut. So this one, the end that you are choosing, doesn't cut this. But I'm trying to... Uh, I'm but all three of those enzymes are on the uh, are on the wall as well. So I don't know which one to choose. So choose one that's not on the wall. You could choose the enzyme. Cut only one of them. If you choose to end and cut both of them, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's still a lot of whatever. So how do how do control print screen? Uh, well, one of them is going to cut wild type. In fact, you have many choices here. But here you have many and that cut wild type, but not the big one. Maybe that, I don't remember. But there's a lot of wild type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you just pick any of those unique and that. On the wild type. Right. Yeah, the mutant won't be cut. So when you run on the gel, it's just a large fragment. Okay, that's yeah, right. so, yeah. How do you, so, uh, and then by if you right? cut it wild type, it's going to become full back. Control and paste. Right, so. And then you could just screen, and then you could crack out everything and just put the. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know. Hi, thank you. Which one of those? Oh, a piece of your Actually, you have to keep it like you pick one of those as well, the other one, and then you cut it.
Mutation is a C. So who was on the cassette C? Okay, so this is how the mutant is done. Uh, let me see. Do you not want to cut both lines? This is the wild type of the mutant. So I, if I pick this enzyme, HPP 1881, well, it's spelling funny, 1881, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so, actually, this enzyme is going to cut both mutant and wild type, so this enzyme is not going to work. So, if it cuts both mutant and the wild type, it's not good? Yeah, you get the same, same similar threat, the patch of wild type, so that's not good. So, you want the one that cuts yeah. the mutant oh, okay. and the wild type in two different places? Uh, no, it, it shouldn't be the same, the same enzyme. Place. Oh, it shouldn't it be, be the same? All the mutant enzymes are on the wild type. Yeah, it should be uh, uh, dif differential, dif differential result. So I pick the C, if I pick CVIA second, this one can only cut the wild type, but not the mutant. So the, the mutant, you see the, this CVIA second, it, it's gone. Where is the mutation? Uh, the mutation is some, somewhere around, say, ATA. This, there's a difference between C and T. ATA, TG. So if I go back here, ATA. That's at the top. A, ATA, TG. Yeah, so this is where my mutation is. So this mutation, uh, and here is. Uh, H, uh, so it's the same enzyme. Uh, it's probably this side. H, H, H. Yeah, this. So A C. Oh, that probably the mutation here. Yeah. So the so changing of that actually affect this enzyme, this and that. Actually, I have actually have four choices at least to pick. But anyone I pick is it, it works similar. Right? So they all cut wild type and not mutant. So I'm just going to. Take the CIA, CBI, sorry, CBI second. 
So then I do, uh, that's why I so just answer the number three, and then I'm going back to APE. Let's go back to APE. Uh, and then selector, make sure I'm going to keep all the endines. Uh, because the, the default endines are only popular endines. So absolutely all endines. And then look for CVI1. Do I see it? C V I yes. Why this one cut three times? Wow. That's uh, one that's two. This must be the wild type. This is the mute tip. I thought those were gonna cut the No, uh, we're supposed to be cutting the wild type because that's that's what you had to say. It cut the mute but uh the wild type probably will cut four times. It only it doesn't cut the mutant in the side in the mutation side. Cut. It cut the mutant probably at other places. So this one is cut four times. The wild type is cut into four pieces, but the mutant is cut into three pieces. So the mutant is, the one side is gone. So if I run the gel for the wild type, uh, and then I just, I just, yeah. So this is how the wild type going to look like. Uh, so wild type will have four fragments, uh, the largest one is 214, then it's 144, 69, 27, 11, what? Well, because it's cut four times, there are five fragments. I'm sorry, there should be five fragments. But actually on the gel, you won't see the first two or probably even three. You, you probably can only see 200 or 100 on the average gel. But, but in theory, you still see five fragments. Then I'm going to look at the mutant enzyme digestion. Yeah, so this time I only see uh, four fragments because it cut only three times now. So the 214 is still there. 144 is still there. 69, 28. So, so it's, it looks like 20, 27 and 11 become 38 now. So that's the difference. Uh, in, in practice, that's actually a really bad choice because this is just two small pieces, hard to see on our restroom. But at least in principle, this is how this will work. Yeah. Question? Yes. Um, how did you look to find out all the enzymes? Where did you go again to find all the enzymes? Okay, so the enzyme. Who, who remember where to find the enzyme? Enzyme. Right, enzyme selector. Go to file, open new enzyme file. I'll take the absolute all my time. Thank you. Dr. Chen? Yes. Um, could you come no. here? Or? Uh, what's your question? <laughs> I'm still not understanding how you know which enzyme works best. Oh, which enzyme works uh, best? That's a technical, a little technical, I don't think we are going to cover in the exam, but the main point is uh, Adoros gel, if you look at SARS letter, it's actually only separate several hundred pairs. So no. anything? Uh, um, like when you compare the wild type and the mutant uh -huh. from the NEV cutter, uh -huh. like how are you supposed to know which restriction enzyme is the one to choose? Uh, NEV only tell you which, which one are different. You can any. So in, in my case, if I go back to here, any of those enzymes would, would be in theory are correct. So PCR1, FAT1, FO... Also, any of the ones that are different from the mutant? In theory, will they work? are all correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there will be some practical issues, but that's, that's beyond what we are asking. So any enzyme that is different from the mutant enzyme are the ones that are going to work? Yes. Okay. With so respect to the mutation region. Can you choose okay. any enzyme uh, in the wild type that's not the same as the mutant? Like any one of them? Yeah. Yeah. In, okay. in theory, it's true. Because unless wild type had not, we are only talking about one mutation. Mm -hmm. Unless wild type has many, many mutations compared to the mutant, then you have a problem. Right. So then what do you do? Then uh, restriction enzyme, you probably have 
and then Cartier, Cartier then it's very difficult to use a uh, restrict and that dis distinction all of them. Right. So in that case it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. So would we um for the midterm, uh -huh. um, I don't really have a good question about how to do this. Um, was our um, ours supposed to come out how yours did? Because I like it. Depending on the enzyme you choose? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, as long as you pick different enzymes, if you okay. found your enzyme, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Also, for the midterm, like this portion of the midterm, will we be another black box? Doesn't matter, you can use your own. Right, you can use your own. I saw it's a beautiful So, uh, as long as the enzyme works, that's the result is what you're supposed to get. That, I mean, re this is explorative. There's no one correct answer. You should just know how to edit. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Any, of any of those that are different from the mutant. Those are different from the mutant. And they go to the top of the inside of the shape file. This is open to new. So, I, if, if we're all done on this the part, then do the this part. And then define the nature of the mutation. Can you click on the one? Well, What's the nature of um, this mutation? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, this, right now we're only looking at DNA sequence. Right? So we need to look at the protein level and see what, what is this mutation. So you use the wild type to um, put the enzyme in? Not put the enzyme in, but whichever enzyme that you're choosing, you click back on the wild type APE form. I'm sorry. Which question are you trying to answer? Um, so you use the wild type plan in order to find enzymes. Uh, which question you want to answer? Um, I'm, I'm doing number two. Number two, okay, yeah. So yeah. all the cutting comes from the wild type. You don't cut the mutant. You, uh, or you no, that's just a, uh, in this case. Yeah. In this case, all the end that we found only cut wild type but not mutant. In, in other oh. cases, uh, so if the mutant yeah. had one that was different from the wild type, you could have cut the mutant instead right, of the wild type. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get yeah. it. Now. Okay. I see, I see. I see. Wait, yeah. can you say what you said again? Yeah. If, if there was a different one on the mutant type, you could cut the mutant instead of cutting the wild type. But since all the mutants were similar to the wild because type, they, you cut the wild type because it had a different one. They than both mutant. have similar restriction enzymes. It's just the different ones that you can use to cut. Like, so you, you could cut any line as long as the enzymes are not the same. So as long as you treat uh, the two in a different way. So it's not always going to be the So mutant. for question four, how will we know how to describe the nature of the mutation if we don't know what the original... Okay, never mind. Because the wild type is going to be like a right? Why like this is what we're comparing the mutation to. Mm -hmm. So based on this, what's different from the wild type is how we're going to decide what kind of mutation it is. Okay, so it's like we're comparing the mutation to the wild. That's like from Bio 120, right? Uh, you yeah. remember the that? Yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't necessarily yeah. remember. I just remember. Yeah. I remember yeah. learning it. Yeah, I remember learning it. So, so you basically, you first had to translate. Uh, you have to find the open reading frame, but in this case, all of them are open reading frame, so you don't have even have to find. So you want to translate the two genes into protein, then align the two protein sequences, identify the difference, then might see what what's the what's the what's the mutation. Okay, I don't see so them on here. I was I was confused on the problem since described the number the size of the fragment or um gel. Okay. What exactly are we describing? Because I see a lot of numbers, and I know that we look at the two. Ah, ah, yes. So you have a you pick an enzyme. The CV. Oh, CVI. So Where this is a mutant. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, the mutant is going to have three sides on the gene. So uh, if this three side, since it's a linear, this uh, it cut this fragment three times, so you have four fragments. The largest one, the largest one is 214 base pair. Mm -hmm. And one for four, six, nine, 38. And so that's all we say, we right, say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then on the wild type, mm -hmm. you should see one more band, because the, the last one, 38, will be 
split again into 20. So we would have to do a jail for both of them. Wild type and the beam turn. But see, that's that's where I'm confused at. Since we did the jail for both of them, we would use the same enzyme. That's right. But if, if it doesn't cut, it doesn't cut. Right. Oh, where are you supposed to find the CVIA2? I don't see it on there. How do we find that and that? Go to file. No, no. Go back to the enzyme. Yeah, go back to the enzyme. Go to the enzyme selector. And then go to the file. And then go to opening. Go back there. And then go to um, absolutely all. Is this going to be? Yes. It's going to be all. Can you click digest? Mm -hmm. This is not something that this is a mean. Uh, this is only transmit on something. This is just a So you should see five then. Alignment is not affected by the circuit. You just have this. Right? If it's circular, you cut one. If you have one left frame. Right? You see that cut? If, it, right, if it's circular, you cut a circle versus cutting a line. So, just to remind you, both of these with the same inside. Mm -hmm. They said if it doesn't cut, it just don't cut. Yep. So there are five fragments in these little cells. This is just going to have two bigger ones. The other one is the one that's going to be on the gel. So that you should say they are fine then, and they are fine then. What do you mean these three are like? Oh, you're doing all five. Don't just put up those two. Don't just put up those two. Chop down. So basically say that the laundry is being distributed to two fourteen. So basically say that the laundry is being distributed to two fourteen. Then you have the other one. That's what I'm going to do is four. Five fragments and their size. Right. Is that in BP? No, I didn't. Is it listed in base pairs? Mutant, you should see a different reason. You should see four. If you use the same enzyme cut as a mutant, you should see a different number and size of it. If they are the same, it will be a wrong choice of them. How do you do uh, the screenshot of the screen again? FN. Oh, FN. So when we translate our mutations, like I translated them, and I know what I posted. So then, yeah, you see, yeah. What's the, what's the, what is the mutation? It's just a different set of words. Yeah, what, how do we describe this mutation? Oh, I don't necessarily this is not friendship, this is the point mutation. Oh. This is the point mutation. You should find out. So this should be something like a UI type. Oh, really. What is UT? Uh, your wild type is. Oh, that's a wild type. Yeah, the wild type is the edge. I am looking at the Y. So you, you need to find that position. So this edge, something, something Y. So, uh, for the for the last question, so I will first uh, translate the two protein. So, two DNA. So this is the wild type. 
I go out that translation, and then I go to the Oh, you translate it first and then copy and paste it okay. to Okay. Uh, so where is the difference is here? This is 60. Now I just need to find out the position. So, which position is this? Each amino acid is coded by three nucleotides, so divided by three. 
should be 155, but the last one in the stock program is 154. So how many of you said the long as 154? Uh, how long is this gene is 465? The protein is 154 amino acid, but the, this gene is 465 base pair. Dr. Chen, do you have another blue cord? My internet keeps going out. Uh, I have to go downstairs. Uh, forget it. Uh, Maybe it's time to take a little break. That's right. <laughs> I don't have to go downstairs. That's right. Uh, we can take a little break. Anyway, if, if you want to. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so. It's good to study the difference. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that it? Okay, now here's another question. What is this gene? How do we know what this is gene? What does this gene do? How do we find this one now? Yeah, what is this gene? Is it uh, does this gene cause breast cancer? Does this gene Google? Try that. I don't know. <laughs> but you say blast. Use what sequence to blast? That's right. Use wild type. What kind of all sequences? The translator, yeah. The, the wild type translator sequence for blast. And that should be something called protein blast or blast TP. So, so, okay, so we should, uh, oh, I guess we can Google for blast TP. <laughs> yes, the blast protein. Right, protein blast. Okay, this is blast TP for protein blast. But we the sequence. I go back to, actually, it's in this case, probably it doesn't matter because the mutant has just one sequence chain. So it probably got separate on that. But still, using white type is the right way to do So copy paste on wild type. How do you open the translation? Oh, translation, you probably go to a window and see where the translation is. In my case, I just picked the. Uh, but I don't see it. Then you have to translate it first. You can do it. You have to uh, translate the sequence. Okay, so in any case, uh, you can blast. But blast, remember, blast is database search. You want to choose the appropriate database. So non redundant protein I guess that's okay, yeah. We can just choose this. And then, uh, well, a big deal. Just click that blue button blast. <laughs> Something will happen. Are we turning this in? Like we should be. No, this is not the point. Okay, so we got a lot of uh, reddish hits. R red means good. Greater than 200, that means very good hits. Uh, those are basically scores. The, the higher score is, the better it is. So we can look at this. Superoxide is mutated, SOD1, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So, yeah, that's basically what the sequence is. So, not big. <laughs> that's basically what this gene is. Like it's superoxide is mutated, number one. It's from Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And this, you can see this one in 100% identical. 99% very, very, yeah, score is 3, 11, 
very small p value. So the, the way to read the blast result is you look look at the two two uh, two things score and the e value. The score should be as high as possible. That's a good hit. And the e value should be as small as possible. The e value. What? Yes. Oh, you go ahead. There's this question after this. Sorry. Oh, the the e value basically means if I it, it based on the sequence, if I just pick something by chance. That chance is called E value. So that chance should be as small as possible. Right, so. right, um, sorry, I forgot it. Oh, I have two yeah. questions. But okay. the second question was, um, a point mutation is, could that be considered a silent mutation? It, it could also be a silent mutation. That's called synonymous substitution or silent mutation. Yes. So um, if we have... If we had put solid mutation and then put where the point mutation was, would that be incorrect? Or like no, this one is not silent. It has the amino acid chip. Certainly it's not silent. Oh. And, sorry, what were you yeah. doing? Like, you blasted the wild type, correct? When you did this? And you were trying to figure out what was the point of... What is this thing? Who, who, who are you basically asking? Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone has some, uh, if I know everybody in the genome, we study all the time, but who is this guy? <laughs> this, is, this is the way to tell, this is a gene called superoxide dismutase. Uh, let me see what other things do. So you can actually know this gene is from yeast, right? Now, uh, and this is so basically the two ones at the top are the most accurate. Uh, yeah, those are all very accurate ones. So this one because there are so many of them. Yeah. But basically, you look at the e value and the score. The e value, uh, all those. Have, in fact, all those. Will be these are top 100 hits. They are all correct. They are all uh, they are all the same thing from different species. Yeah. So uh, I need to find a human gene. Uh, let me let me Google human SOD1. Right. See what happens. So oh, uh, I know, I know. Uh, instead of remember the blast drink. Instead of blast everything, I'm going to blast to human. Homo sapiens, right? So that then I'm going to find just a human, human, human homo. So let's do the blast again. So what's this mutation missing? Right. So you see the humans are not red; it's uh, pinkish because those are uh, a little far away from east. So those are good here, but they are they are not. Uh, so this is the human gene. Uh, let me see what I, uh, I, I try to see. So this is basically a gem bank file. This is this protein sequence gene. Bless you. Excuse me. Oh, you said, I saw you have a question, but you were saying bless you. Oh no, I was just telling you. Oh, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you look at this gene bank file, how long is this gene? This is a human SOD mRNA. How long is this gene? 981 base pair. Right? So, and this is the Homo sapiens you find this Let's see this whether this one has a. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, how many eggs do we see? Uh, Which one did you open? This is, I opened the something called NM000454. So, this one. So, how many eggs on uh, this thing is? Let me see. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it looks like there are four. Uh, oh, there's another one, five. Uh, okay, I see five axons. So how many axons on this can have five axons? So let me see what you need to come up. There should be some summary information somewhere, but uh, I don't see it. Sometimes it has. Sometimes the, on the, you can see there's a summary information somewhere, say five axons, but this one I don't see it. Actually, this is how many exons? One, two, three, four, five. Five exons. But it didn't say explicitly, so I would still suggest you to count explicitly to make sure that it, it, it is right. So if, if the question asks you how many exons, you want to count how many exons. Can I? Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I think we have finished all the. What else do I want to go through? Let me see. So, gem bank file. Yeah, so the rest of them, I, we may want to go through some uh, mass assignment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Are you, you have a specific math that you're about to go over, or would you just about to go over the ones that we're going Which one you want? <laughs> uh, assignment three. Assignment three? Okay, yeah. All of them. All of them? Okay. Uh-huh. So, question. Why did you, um, you know, the address shows your name, why did you choose HB1, 18, 18, 18, I think that's what cut both wild type of nutrients. So I basically say that and that one, the name it's, a, it's interesting because it happened to have the same year we spelled the sign. That's just a sign problem. I didn't choose that. What sign? I don't remember. I, I, I remember I took CVI number three, but there are several other endings in theory. Yeah. That must be the mutant. If you go back to the yeah, if you go back to the wild type, you call it. Yeah, so all this kind of inferior class. So fat one, apple, CCR. Sorry. So all, all this and that here, they cut wild type, but not mutant. So if you choose. This what any one of these four and that it's going to cut well but not like that. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. But when you do the do you when you are doing the external you can you are going to pick those and then cut those well type and you yeah. but the mutual won't be cut because there's no sign there. That's how you can see the different on the yeah. Yeah. So, so you keep this and then you are going to put, put uh, add this and then put those wild type of mutant DNA yeah, But only the wild type will be cut because it has a size. Oh, well, we translated. But the mutant one, it doesn't so even have the size. So what you do is you go AP, and you translate your wild type in your root, and it's just the thing that says translate. And you put that sequence into the crystal, and it's going to wind up. So that's like right here. Yeah. Only needs but but then, right, it definitely it won't go through the other people. Okay, so. If it's translated. Yeah. But then, okay, so then I'm going to Okay, mass assignment three. Look at the table above. We oh. did the graph already, that's fine. Uh, oh, go yeah. go down to like number three. Number mm -hmm. three. How did you do that? Okay, well, can I ask someone volunteer to do number three? Anybody? Can you pull up the curve? Uh, what? Uh, we, 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 can, we, we can just use a fake curve. Uh, 
Yeah. So what what, what, what this means is I have an unknown sample. I have an unknown sample here. If I just take this read on the OD, the, the curve is here, right? But the curve has a range. After a certain range, it's, it's not a curve line. It's not a linear anymore. So I, I read this one, somehow it's here. So it's terribly inaccurate. So I, instead of measuring this directly, I, I do a 50-fold dilution. 50-fold dilution. I take some sample here, then add more water. Uh, I take one microliter of this, add 49 microliter of water. So this will be 50 fold dilution. And then I measure that this one, the OD is 0.55. So a 0.55 is about 0.55 is about uh, 0.6, 0.5, 0.55. Uh, maybe three. Let's just say three. Right. It's about so point five five is about three micrograms per milliliter. Now the question is here, and that's basically times fifty. Right? I did a fifty times dilution, about one hundred fifty. Hmm. Wait. Um, so you say the actual concentration is about one fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I basically. Run that part of the number. I mean, the actual, since you had the equation, you can't get calculated. Right? So, in this one, we don't need to do um, C1D1 equals C2D2 after we find the, the three micrograms per milliliters. Like in the case where there's C. Mm -hmm. you, you, you it's already told you it's a 50 times more concentrated. Right? So, this is 50 times more concentrated than this. Okay. You can just times 50 if I'm not Wait, can you do that one more time? Explain how you got three. Okay. Why? Why? You showed it on the graph. Why don't we come here and explain? You seem to get it. Um, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can explain it to you. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you go back to the problem? Up there. Yeah. So we use the equation of the line. And you see the equation. Oh, um, I think why? And the x is the concentration. So since the absorbance for 0.55, you just replace it in the equation oh. and you found the x to be pretty Oh, so it's just plugging into the equation. It's just plugging in. Where's the equation? On the graph. Oh. On the graph. Where's the graph? So you plug the three and five. You plug the, the point three and five and multiply by the three. You plug the point five and for the absorbance. And then you find the concentration. Where's the graph? You, yeah, you don't have to. Uh, oh, they you, don't, that back. you can just estimate, right? So this is point four. This is point five. Point five five rubber, roughly here. And you can just draw a line here. Right. That's about three something. Right. So, so on the um, yeah, would that equation actually be on there for an accurate number? If they wanted an exact number, would that equation be on there? Uh, you don't know exam probably is there, yeah. What is it then? So, basically if you don't have to but you can if you want to calculate it's fine, but you you can this is point six, that's point five, right? Point five five will be here. Right. So you can just draw a line here, that's the point here. Okay. Uh, actually, it looks like point. Two, 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 two. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, that's how you get the. Okay. So. And then you multiply that by 50. I get it. Why do you multiply by 50? I get it. Because it's basically times that. And you did that same thing for um, 0.65, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you point six five, this point six, that's point eight, that's point seven, point six five here. Uh, this oh. Okay, it should be four, sorry. But six five should be four. This, this doesn't look no, right. Why are you changed? You don't have the uh, right X and Y. Uh, I guess it's probably yeah, four something. Because the that's right, yeah. So so it looks like it's 
Oh, I think because I uh, I stretch the, the figure become too small, so so if I put this now, this is three, my four point five, my six point five. It's two point something. It's, so it's between two and three. So roughly, yeah. and this one is uh, six five. It's about here. Or, yeah, it's about four or five. Yeah, it, it's it's not a uh, number. Uh, it's not integer. It's, it's I guess four point. Are you something. still on number three? Yeah. yeah. Uh, number three point five five basically mm -hmm. is uh, not exactly three. It's two point something. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it's just uh, I just round up the number. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But passing the exam last year as accurate as possible. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, well, okay, let me see. Let, let's say <laughs> we have this uh, equation. Let's say, how do we find this one? Now, the equation here says, uh, the equation here says y equals 0.0346x plus. Point, point four nine eight four. Now the y is my uh, concentration. Uh, y is my OB. Yeah. The x is my DNA. Right. So basically, this is what the equation is. And so for the point five five, I will basically have point. 5, 5 equal 0 0.0346 with DNA plus 0 0.4984. I said we could find all this by just using the equation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you just calculate this. Uh, I move this to the right divide, uh, and divide it by this, that should be this. And then multiply it by 50. Yeah, yeah. So that's number three. Number four, you have performed class in isolation by DNA concentration in nano drugs. The DNA concentration of sample is 800 nanograms per microliter. You need four micrograms. Uh, how much do you want to protect? Okay. Uh, we're good. Yeah, yeah. So file alarm, uh, I, I'll still stay here. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this building has been here since 2000 something. It, it never had been burned. They so said I the same thing about the Titanic. So how do we do the memo four? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. 
together. Oh, Oh. Is this for microgram? Yeah. What is this? Nanograms. Right, yeah. What is this? Nanograms. Right, yeah. What is this? Um, so then we need to know the conversion factor. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. It is. Yeah. So, you have, so you need four microgram, right? And your starting solution is 800 nanogram per... Microliter. Micro uh, basically, you say, right, how much volume times this concentration will be give me 4 microgram? Right. And 800 microgram is basically 0 0.8, uh, nanogram 0 0.8 microgram for this. Right. And so the volume is basically 4 divided by 0 0.8. True. Also, oh, so yeah, you don't really need C1, B1 equals C2, B2. It just depends on what you're trying to find. So how right, do you yeah. do it? Oh, you just, you just use the conversion factor. Right, yeah, yeah. This, this is 800 nanogram. It's 0.8 microgram. So how much would you need to pipe it? Five? Four microgram. It would be five microliter. <laughs> Five. Uh, we just do the packaging. Five microliter of DNA from a plasma stock, which has a concentration of six hundred micrograms per milliliter. What's the amount of uh, DNA in microgram? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, this again, you need a conversion. So. Six gram. Uh, six hundred microgram per milliliter and the student also take 5 microliters so this is basically we want to find out and this 5 microliter times 600 microgram and that should be 1000 microgram uh, uh, microliter I wow, there it down, there it down. Five here, this should be two, should be three. Mm. Hold on, hold on, let me marry you. So you multiply the five microliters? Right, so. So this is the volume. Right. Times concentration. You go mass. Same thing here, right? Volume times concentration equals mass. Mm -hmm. One microliter equals a thousand. I mean, one liter equals a thousand microliters. Right, yeah. I mean, if you still write ML in the exam, I didn't want that. I know, I got you. <laughs> okay. So, did you just do. Uh, okay. The 600 over a thousand, is that. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, if, I, if I put this one more clearly, so I basically have 5 microliter, right, so 1,000 microliter, 600 micrograms, so 1 milliliter is 1,000 microliter, right, so, and this, all this. So this cancels. Right, so yeah, the two zero are cancelled, uh, 10 divided by 5 is yeah. 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. I mean, you can also use a calculator to cross multiply. Right, right. Yeah, so. so that represents five microliters yes. over one. The total is three. Uh, well, I, I, I didn't. You didn't finish your question. So. I mean, like, 
you know where it says five microliters times six hundred? Like, is that five? Is the five over anything? Is it like over an imaginary one? I mean, I would guess. No, I mean, like, is there any type of unit under it or no? No. That's the, the volume. In, the student took five microliters. It's just five microliters. Oh, five. And the concentration is six hundred over it. Though. Right. Right. Okay. Concentration is this. Uh, it is basically six hundred per this right? And this per microliter is basically one thousand microliter. Assignment two and one, and then go for it. Okay. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's also a assignment four, though. Oh yeah, that's true. That's assignment one. Is that this one? Mm-hmm. That's assignment. That's assignment two. Okay. That's assignment one. You want to? Let's just do two first. Oh, okay. I just, yeah. Yeah, this one. This one. Let's look at my So, how would you prepare five x bacteria license card for your working? What x solution is this? Uh, yes, K five zero three hundred nine one four point one. Uh, 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 how much volume do you create in your heat and together you have to make 500 milliliters of finite like the structure solution like that. Okay, so one X solution is, uh, oh, I'm so sorry, this really should be stuff. Uh, Yeah, does it end? And the uh, stock solution is uh, you have you have the stock which is point five molar tris. What's tris? Uh, it's called uh, tris. It's just chemical. Mm. Yeah. Well, nice and uh, five molar. Basically, this is what we call XT. This will be X 
So do hazard side twist. Uh, it's actually put a volume side. Volume twist. Volume. So do hazard side and volume up. So do car right. So do hazard side. How much do we need? You want the one x and the five x to make five hundred milliliter. Uh, question. Yeah, the question asks you to make 500 milliliter of 5x. Question. Yeah. You uh, have 1.5 mole. What is it? You have a million. Uh, 300 millimeter uh, 5x, 300 times 5, uh, 1500, which is 1.5 molar. Why don't you keep it as a uh, millimolar? Uh, because it's easier. I mean, I can write. I can also write the uh, fifteen hundred. I mean, if you if you like, right? This this is fifteen hundred minimal. If you want to write minimal, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying trying to find five hundred milliliters of five x. Right. So on this one, you have. And you need 500.25 uh, and x times 0.5 and x equal. And so this is basically twice more concentrated than this, should be 250. On this one. This one uh, uh, you have Are you multiplying the stock in the uh, 5x by each other? Yeah, the 5x is, is here, right? So... What this, equation is this? C1 this would be C1, V1, this is C2, uh, V2, C2 side. So, so this one would be... Uh, 1.5 molar, which is C1, times uh, V1, uh, which is again 500, equal uh, C2 will be 5, V2 is what we want to find, and the V2 will be uh, Fifty. Um, I'm sort of confused as to what you use. Um, so, why do you have two equations? Uh, I'm calculating the second one now. Right. So, so basically, you have you have a, you, the stock is you have two three stock. Right, you have one stock here. Oh. Another stock here. A third bottle. You have Do three bottles. You want to make one solution. Those are the concentrations of right, the stock. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to calculate three numbers here. So we don't need the one egg solution. No. That the was one egg solution is just to use calculate the five eggs. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and you just change it to millimolar? Right, right, yeah. Let me turn this Oh, okay. Right, use the 1x to calculate 5x. And 5x is what the question asks you to make. 500 milliliters. Right, so you have 1x equals 500 milliliters. Right, you have 1x equals 500 milliliters. And those are the stock. We have one, so basically we have, uh, we have one bottle, uh, maybe I can rejoin this. We have one large bottle. Oh, this is not looking like that. Bottle. So, uh, we have one bottle called 0.5 dollar trace. We have another bottle. It's 5 dollar sodium chloride. And we have third bottle which is fine uh, in sodium hydroxide. And we need to make one bottle, this 
uh, one bottle solution which is 250 millimolar uh, 1500 millimolar could you have just kept it in millimolars instead of changing it to molar? What? I said, could you have just kept the um, the units in millimolars instead of changing it to molar and the answer still be correct? Yeah, it, it, I mean, as long as you keep the units there, it, it's, it's fine. Okay. Uh, this is a 1.5. So basically, you, have, you start with three bottles of this, you want to make one bottle of this. How do you make this one? Uh, you need to add some here, some here, some here, and with extra water okay. should be also added in the end. So here, 250 of the first one. So this one, we're going to add 250 milliliter. This one, we have 150 milliliter. And uh, how much was this one? This oh. one, we have, uh, so 0. 0.5 times 500 so equals 5 times V2 and V2. This is C1, this is C V2. Right, so. And that would be 50. So we need to add 50 molar here. 50 milliliter here. So here we have a 250 here, 150 here, 50 here. How, how much water should I add? 50 milliliters. Yeah, 50 milliliters of water in the also should be had. That's that guy. This should not be on the moon. You know how confusing it was? I thought the stock solution was one body and everything was the side. Uh, well, it, it, it did say uh, each reaction. Like, uh, and mixed together. It never say it's a. <laughs> right. So. I mean, it's also plural, right? Stock solution. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a single. <laughs> so, stock solutions are. <laughs> oh. I think. The well, the reason I think I'm confused because um, yeah. they say you need some. Um, because basically we're uh, looking for V1 and 500 milliliters is V2 because that's what we're looking for and you just have the equation flip backwards sorry ah, never mind yeah <laughs> well, where's that five uh... because you want uh, C2 is what you want to be your final right yeah so the volume that you want is 500 milliliters. Uh -huh, yeah. So V2 will be 500. And you see up there you have uh, it as the C1 V1. Yeah, you, you know, the C1 V1 really, it, it doesn't matter. Either way it goes. Really, really, really right. Yeah, it's just how we were taught. Oh. So it's just confusing. It's, uh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. We we see one ripple that it's just a single. You can you can use the ripple. Yeah. Okay. Actually, this is a routine procedure in the lab. It's not something why it, those are just routine procedures. In the lab. So <laughs> they just they just pick a, a bad task, uh, see whether you have to do it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so if you if you one day you work in the lab, you you have all these kind of stock solutions. Sodium hydroxide, sodium chloride, and you want to make solution. That this is just a common common task. 
It's no. basically like making food. I mean, when you make food at home, no. you say, take how much salt, how much oil, but you eventually it goes to the last part. <laughs> so, I tried to make myself look cute and it just wasn't working. <laughs> So is point uh, is point five in like normal like for mold? Is it the same thing as mold? Uh, point five mold is the mold. No, I mean the end, the end at the end. Yeah, that's what I think too. But why? But if I change this into people, let me look at the, the official definition of <laughs> why. Uh, I think they make no difference. But why we have to use a different way for? Uh, there's probably some chemical chemical reason to do it in this way. So. Also need to review what 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 is our what classmate. So our PRS fifteen one classmate is this. This is our actual plasmid going to use.
Well, actually, I, I'm recording the whole thing. I'm going to upload on uh, YouTube. So. <laughs> so our password is like this. Uh, is that on Google? Yeah, this one. It's probably on the common side. I, I didn't upload to our own side. So this is this is a wild type and I type two. Uh, Remember our whole project is, is, is want to say measure the function of MSH2. The MSH2 is a mismatch repair protein. So and this is our plasmid P MSH2. So we are going to put this into yeast. This is that process called transformation. We are going to do a transformation. So that's the answer. Right. Transformation into E cell. Uh, uh, e cell. This is a cell. Uh, e cell usually has a little bud, so that's called. That's why it's called budding yeast. So I'm going to say uh, that's called budding yeast cell. So any time we put some DNA piece into DNA uh, into cell, that's a transformation process. Anytime we put DNA into cell. Uh, put the circular DNA. Oh, uh, plasma uh, DNA? Yeah, yeah, put, yeah. If we put a virus DNA, virus, put a, a virus, that's called transfection. If we, if we transfer, if we put a virus into a cell, that's called transfection. If we just put a DNA into a cell, that's called transformation. Uh, but we are not. That's probably a concept you should know. Right? Okay. The question is, the cell really doesn't want to put. Ask you to, if you try to uh, sell it like our body. If you remember, if you if you have a if if, if someone someone stuck into your feet, they say there's a nail. Eventually, going to be pushed out. The cell is also like this. If you put DNA into a cell, cell wants to push it out. How can we keep the DNA inside of the cell? Mm. By closing the residual. Uh, uh, How do we keep the plasmid inside of the cell? And cell cell going to try to push the plasmid out. Mm. How do we keep the plasmid inside of the cell? Mm. Some kind of binding something. I don't know. Is there is there uh, what, what, what do you say? <laughs> I didn't get that. 22%. Enzyme binding. No, this is not about enzyme binding. Antibody? No. Remember, E cell has no immune system. Antibody is mammalian. Only mammalian have, yeah. E cell does not have antibody. Is there Put an antigen. Do we use an antigen? No. This is something called genetic selection or called complementation. So, so seal it? What? So it seals it so that the plasma can stay in or it closes up or what does it do? Not exactly. It basically, we put a cell on a, a, a specific condition so it cannot live without the plasmid, right? So, so how how do, how do you make sure people are going to do something? You make sure they are going to depend on it, right? Like uh, if people who are had to smoke because they, if they don't smoke, they cannot function. They have to be alive to have this. In order to have the cigarette to be alive, so. <laughs> So basically, we have to make sure the cell will be dependent on that. And what is it called again? This is called complementation. So basically, this the cell we 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 put something called the oxytrophic marker. That's the histidine. So in this case, we we have a marker here called uh, here three. There is a gene. What is here three? This here three gene is. It basically converts uh, chemicals into histidine. 
synthesize histidine for cell. So we are going to let the, but we delete the, the histidine from the cell. So the cell that cannot synthesize histidine. And then we let the cell grow in the absence of histidine. So it, it, unless it can have the histidine 3 on the part that it cannot, live, cannot survive. See the point? So, so basically you keep this, it in there by using the histidine? Yeah, no, without, by, by remove histidine from the growth media. Oh, then it can stay inside of the cell. Yeah, so, so we are going to uh, put a cell in, in, in media, right? So, it's But in that media, we are going to remove histidine from it. Histidine is the essential amino acid, right? We, human have, human have 12, Essential amino acids? Uh, I forgot the. Uh, there are 20 amino acids, human. Uh, there are some essential amino acids we cannot eat. We have to eat from the food. We have to, without those essential amino acids, we will just pass out, I guess. For this one, too, we, we delete the normal histidine gene in this yeast one. So, so this is, is his 3 minus. It's, it's gone. We disrupt it in the genome of this yeast, this cell, and then we transform this part. But how do we keep it alive? We, we grow this cell in rich media with histidine. We first, so when we remove it, it, it can be alive because we provide histidine to the cell. And then we do a transformation, put the plasma into it. And this time, we remove histidine from its food. So it cannot survive without this plasma. See the point? Mm -hmm. The cell can't survive without the plasma. That's right, yeah. So, so you have to keep this plasma. But and by keeping this plasma, the message too will also be put there. And then we also, each one of you also have a mutant message too. So you can, you can also, instead of one type of message too, we put a mutant one, say M707i. That's basically AG821. Right? So we can also put a mutation in message too. That's how we can fool the uh, measure the function of those mutations. In fact, this is a lot of overview of the entire project. <laughs> so, in, in your uh, if you do research representation, people are going to ask you. So, how do you measure the mutant function? It's basically how we do this. Right? So, so we, we delete the uh, uh, histidine three in the yeast gene. That also means we have to delete uh, the MSH two in the yeast cell as well. If the cell already has a functional MSH2, we cannot measure our mutant. Right? So we, we remove everything is normal from the yeast cell. But, and so the, but then we give all the food uh, it, it needs to, to, to survive. But when we want to measure it, we remove it. So <laughs> that's kind of uh, how, we, how, we, how we do this in yeast. So we delete it. Both genes from the cell. Yeah. After growing it, or before, before we grow it. And then we grow, and then we put the, the plasmid in yeah. it. Yeah. But the only way to grow it is to take the histidine. No, the only way to, keep to the select plasmid. for plasmid is to remove it. The, the, the way to grow it, we have to add histidine in the meat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, say that again. To grow, we have to add the right, because the, the yeast cell cannot synthesize histidine. When, without the plasma, the yeast cell cannot synthesize histidine. So, so to grow the cell? Yeah, you, so we have to add histidine to the uh, food, to, to the cell for it to grow. Right. And then to place the plasma, and then you take the histidine out. So, why so that's the After you transform the plasma into it, then the cell will have this plasmid, right? So after the plasmid is inside, it's going to have the histidine three here and oh. and such two here. So so and then the function of this this mutation will be uh, uh, that their function will be played, replaced by those functions on the plasmid. And then we don't need those condition anymore. Oh. We remove it, and the cell has to keep this plasma right. to survive. Okay, and then that's the um, yeah. complementation. Yeah. 
this is called complementing. Basically, his three complements is minus MSH to one type complement MSH to minus in a sense. Right. Uh, in fact, we actually not just putting one plus name, we're putting another plus name called uh, reporter plus name, P SH44. Uh, we put another one, P SH44. Uh, Does this apply just to these cells or all cells? This method is. Generic. Okay. This is basic genetic uh, concept called complementation. Okay. Yeah. The, the basic concept is the what's the word? Uh, uh, canonical, <laughs> ubiquitous, uh, something like that. Yeah. So the basic principle working in, uh, in all algorithms. But for every species, there are some technical details can can be separated. Uh -huh. where, where do you think the mutation goes? <laughs> mutation goes on the plasmid. So instead of putting a wild type MSH to there, we can put a mutant. Mm -hmm. That's why you have a mutant plasmid there. So so instead of putting a wild type MSH to there, you can you can put a mutant there. You can put the, in your oh. case, right. Uh, your plasmid is probably called AG something. Uh, AG right, right. So you put uh, there's actually a, a type uh, more more accurate than maybe. You also is uh, uh, in your case that the uh, uh, what's the name uh, AG thirty three. In your case it should be H sixty five A Y. So that should be S six five A Y. I'm I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this. That's in, in your case you put in this password in the cell. So the this the function of MSH2 will be played by this mutant protein. And then we can measure how what's the consequence of this mutation. Okay, so this is really a long day. Uh, <laughs> I learned a lot. Oh, okay. Okay, we have still have some tape <laughs> left. <laughs> okay. I say tape, I mean, okay. Okay, so, so basically that's how we decide the... the uh, this is basically how we decide the media. So the food we provide uh, to the cell is, is basically media. Right. So, uh, and those are, those are the, that's what we call genotype. So those are the, those are called genotype. Translation happens before transcription. What? Does translation happen before transcription, or is it transcription and translation? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Say it again. Is I think she answered my question. I don't. I know. Because transcription is hard. Translation is translation. That's what I thought. This question is really important. Oh, the um, information wow. contained in the RNA is used for this protein to the process that they is. They say it's translation. Is that the big term? That's translation. From RNA to protein is translation. I put transcription the first time. No, transcription is from DNA to RNA. See, okay. But it was like information contained in the RNA. I mean, once you get it from the DNA to the RNA, it wasn't, isn't that process called transcription? I think he added the part where you can do oh, the information. Oh, man. That's how many times I did. I did 120 times. Wow. <laughs> you by yourself on that. Because they didn't tell me which one was correct or not. Wait, how'd you do that? Uh, 
figure out which one is correct. Yeah. It is he, he just added the link where you could press submit to see if each one is correct. I know because <laughs> I did it before and it did not let us tell me and I was so sad. I did it only five yeah. times. I, I was not going to keep doing it. three times, but I gave up because I was like, I don't know which one was too good. I did it like 20 times. Was this for the quiz? Did you get on? Because I could not figure out that question. Oh, okay. So is it still up? Yeah. Yeah, it is up. It'll close till 11. Dr. Chen, why do we use yeast instead of every other cell? Yeah. It keeps all your yeast in your last one. Why were you? Thus far, I've only got one wrong. This is stupid translation. Transformation. No, it's, it's actually, well, the basic mechanism, the all active cells have some basic mechanism, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, the basic mechanism is all uh -uh. The each cell is much She did, I did not say that. Oh. Can I show that? Your girl, please get out of here. Right, right, right. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's actually not closer to human cells from a clinical perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those important functions are uh, most of the important functions. Now, this one job, each cell doesn't have an immune system, doesn't have a cancer system. So there are some higher things. It doesn't have a brain. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah there, there, are, there are some uh, things is kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ah, oh, was the next step. We have a recording. We are going to so after we put the plasma into, into it, this is basically called genetic uh, selection, and then we do functional uh, uh, measure of the MFA two protein. That's called FOASA on the Euro three. So we have a that's right. That's the reading part. Why why we use FOA to measure the the MSH two? Because we have recorded plasma. We Which have a U, uh, have a Euro three gene, and uh, and in terms of Euro three, there are some uh, microsatellite. And so, if the microsatellite is correctly repaired, the Euro three will be expressed, and the FOA uh, will be converted into something toxic and kill the cell. But if MSH2 is dysfunctional and there will be a lot of mutation, Euro3 can be disabled and then the cell will live. So this is a negative selection. So if MSH2 is good, mm -hmm. the cell will live? Or it will cell live. will not live. Okay. Yeah. So, if I meant, so this is on FOA plate. But on FOA plate, if MS2 is good, the cell will not live because U3 is there. U3 will kill the cell in, in the present type of way. But on, so, the FO, but on the FOA plate that is um, bad, then the, your, then it, the cell will live? Yes. So on the FOA plate, FOA plate, any yeast colony you see, that means it does not have U3, which means the micro, there's a microsatellite mutation in front of it. That means our message to is not functioning properly. Which is basically the more column you see, that means the more mutation you see. Question. Yes. Okay, listen to these two answer choices. Mm -hmm. They sound similar. Mm -hmm. It says um, when E. coli grows and divides, it also rapidly replicates the plasma to produce multiple copies of P and SH2 for molecular studies. This one also says the same thing, but when E. coli grows in the last alpha, rapidly replicates the MSH2 protein for plasma extraction. Like, that's saying the same thing. It's the same thing. Exactly, it's not I know, he just changed. Oh, I didn't see this. I can't. Okay, okay, okay. That's it. Can you explain the FOA plate again? Okay, uh, this is something called negative selection. So it only selects for the bad, not for the good. Oh, so the FOA plate selects for bad. Yeah, so everything lives on FOA because they already have mutation in U3. Why this works? Because, actually, I didn't mention, 
this also means the cell before we do transformation it should also be Euro3 negative. What is your Euro3? Euro3 is the gene to uh, involve the urethral Okay. And the negative means the mutant, right? Yeah, right, yeah. So the 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 host the cell should also be Euro3 negative. Otherwise this will this whole cell will be killed entirely. Okay. So the, 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 the genome type of the host cell should be U3 negative, MSH2 negative, his 3 negative. Okay, in order for it to survive? Or? Uh, in order for the work for this to this asset to be to work. Right? Because U3 if U3 is already in the cell, we cannot measure the plasma anymore. The mm -hmm. right. the, we are using Euro 3 as, a, as, as our reporter to measure the function of MSH2. If the cell already has a Euro 3, and basically this, the, the, the whole plane is not going to work. Okay. So, which of the Euro 3 from the From, actually, we took the Euro 3 from East. We just removed it from the genome and put out the plasmid. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, there's still one little thing I haven't mentioned. How do we keep the reporter plasmid there? Why, why the reporter plasmid is not kicked out? Because it doesn't have a Similar thing, similar thing. So, this is because on the reporter plasmid, we have another gene called tryptophan 5, probably. So many genes. Yeah, this tryptophan 5 synthesized tryptophan. And in the in in the east the whole cell genome is also tryptophan 5 negative. So we also remove the tryptophan tryptophan from the media. So the cell has to keep this plasmid, otherwise it will not live. So that's how 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 it can keep the yeast cell to have two plasmids. It's actually very, very unhealthy for yeast. So this yeast cell grow extremely slow because it, we removed so many things from it, so it's pretty bad for yeast. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but yeast doesn't mind. <laughs> so I keep something inside. What did you say that oh, This is because remember how we keep this plasmid in the cell? We use histidine. But how do we keep the reporter plasma there? Yeah, we use tryptophan. Mm -hmm. And what does it do for the uh, Tryptophan is also a essential amino acid for each cell to survive. So if we remove it from the food, each cannot get tryptophan from its food, but it also kind of synthesize on its own, then it's going to die. Unless it keeps this plasma in it. And the reporter cell tells us about MSH2 inside the yeast? Reporter plasmid carry Euro3 as a uh, uh, measure of MSH2 function on the PMSH2 plasmid. Okay. So we have two plasmid in the cell. Can you repeat that sentence one more time, the reporter? The reporter plasmid carry a Euro3 which has microsatellite in front of it. The, the microsatellite integrity will be used to measure the mismatch repair function of the MSH2 gene carried on the PMSH2 plasmid. So it carries URA3, which uh Which have microsatellite in front of it. And the MSH2, the, the correct replication of this microsatellite will be carried out by MSH2. To tell us about the mismatch repair of MSH2. The URA3 tells us that. About That's right. And URA3 uh, tells us through the negative selection. If URA3 is bad, it's going to live on FOA. If URA3 is good, it's not going to live. Okay, if URA is good, it's good, it's not going to live. That's right. In the presence of FOA, FOA yeah. this is a yeah, negative selection. Selective? Negative? This, this is something called negative selection. 
This is a negative selection. Only we are selecting for bad things. We are selecting for bad guys, but not good guys. Any colony you see on the plate, they are, they are bad okay. guys with this back to Euro 3. That means their Euro 3 is mutated. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if um, Euro 3 could uh, kill the cell, then it's mutated. Euro 3 does not kill. I mean, oh, the, yeah, Euro 3 yeah, kills a cell in the, in the person, actually. So, yeah, right. So, yeah. if it kills the cell, mm -hmm. then it means that it's mutated? Then it means it's, it's not mutated. Yes. Yeah. That means a message 2 is good. Okay. So, yeah. what does this tell us about mismatch repair? So, you can just come, the more colony you see on FOA, that means the how bad MS2 is. Oh, but if it's not uh, good, then you won't be able to tell? Uh. If it's perfect MS2, you won't see many colony here. You see very few. Okay, but if it's a bad? You see a lot more. Okay. So you just count the number of colony, compare the mutant with the wild type. The mut if the mutant has a similar number with the wild type colonies, that means the mutant still have reasonable function. If the mutant has a lot more colony on FOA play, that means the mutant is very bad at the mismatch repair, has a terrible mismatch repair back then. So you do this like, would y'all, never mind, never mind. Oops, wow. Finally. Now then, I'm going to ask you, what kind of media do you think we use on the FOA plate? It shouldn't have histidine, so it should be minus histidine, right? This should be minus histidine. Histidine, histidine. If we want to keep the MS2 part, it should also be minus tryptophan. Because we want to keep the plasmid there, report plasmid there. So the FOA plate should have all these things? It should be grown in that media? Yeah, yeah. so it should also plus FOA, of course. Right? FOA should be there. <laughs> and it should also plus urease cell, because we are selecting for genes which don't have urease, uro 3. So if it's gone bad, it has to grow, we have to provide. Euro 3 will synthesize urea cell, which is part of a uridine. You have, it's going to need this to too. So we have to put urea cell there. So those are the basic. There are actually some other detail, but I don't think. I'm not sure whether we'll, we'll cover it or not. But there's actually another thing. The Euro 3 is under some inducible promoter, so we also need that inducible promoter to be expressed. So there are some things we need to consider there too at the moment. I'm not sure whether the other section will cover this or not. But so so for the restriction enzyme uh, choice between one type of mutant, uh, as from my knowledge the other three section didn't cover it. So that's I will put that into your exam and you will get bonus point for that. So. This no this this everyone should cover. But the restriction, pick a restriction and that to distinguish the wild type and mutant. That um. part, other section did not cover. So they, they were, the other section, the instructor just tell them this is and that you use. Mm. So. Lucky us. Yeah, I think you get extra <laughs> from this. Yeah. And you, you should get extra points on that. If you can do it in exactly. So. Mm -hmm. That. I have a, I have a uh, okay, I'm going to take a break and... Uh, yeah, it's 3.30. What? You can take a break. How do you want it? Okay, it's, it's done, right? We, we end at phase 3, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Is this um, right here?